Hey everyone, it's Carl, and as I said before in a previous video, prestigious Carl, and Eric and I have been talking about uh, the prestige edges and Pathfinder for Savage Worlds, and we're gonna keep keep going on that. Adventure and intrigue, fighting monsters out of our league, we'll roll the dice and pray the nice, a plus two and I might succeed. Hey everyone, again, Carl with Eric. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> yes. Hello. Um, hello, Val. <laughs> and we're Tabletop Tango, and look at the bubbles, do the stuff, love support, um, you know, ring the bell, do all those kind of things. Because I hear if you do a lot of comments, that helps the algorithm, and I have no idea how the algorithm works, but that's what they say. So we got past we did we did the first group of uh, prestige edges the last time and now we're going to kind of close that off um, and start right up with without further ado with uh, the Pathfinder Chronicler. Yeah, the Pathfinder Chronicle, Chronicler this is a it's kind of the first faction based one. Uh, Pathfinder is, you know, Pathfinder, right? <laughs> it's uh it's the it's the kind of uh, I, I guess they're they're kind of like an adventuring guild. Um, explorers that they, they capture relics uh, they're just all about they're the kind of like anybody can join and they're the ones that goes on mission it's the kind of the easiest vehicle to to write um, um, adventure paths to get players on places um, they feel yeah, like this is the Pathfinder it, Chronicle they kind of feel like you know how you had the Knights Templars had this they're not that they're Knights but they had this whole you know pilgrims could stop and they have places they can go and they just yeah, they the had all the knowledge, and, and it's it's got that vibe, you know. So yeah, kind of with some Indiana Jones uh, mixed in. Uh, so you need yeah. a survival of a D six <laughs> and a common knowledge or a cult of a D eight. So this is for requirements so far. This is this has been the most kind of very specific, and I guess that makes sense. It's a faction. It's so it's still a little weird to me that survival and then those because Pathfinders kind of run the gamut, you know. So right. these requirements are the first ones I kind of was like taking a little bit of back. Uh, they're explorers and seekers of lost or forgotten knowledge. They're the quintessential adventurers. Uh, moving on, I'm not going to read all the flavor text. We get the Pathfinder ability. The Pathfinder increases the party's speed by 10% when navigating to known or mapped locations. See travel section on page 165. Uh, they also know which paths are safest and where to exercise additional caution. If the Game Masters is drawing for encounters and gets the enemy's result, the Chronicler may make a smart roll at minus two to discard that card and place it with the next card in the deck. Uh, moving on to Pathfinder Chronicler 2, Epic Tales. They, the Chronicler recites a moving and evocative tale. Once per session while the party is resting, every wildcard alley who hears the tale gains a Benny. Uh, moving on to Pathfinder Chronicler 3, Call Down the Legends. Once per game week... The Chronicler can magically summon five shades of great Galarian heroes who have gone before. The shades assume mortal foes and have the profiles in the sidebars at the right and last for one uh, for one, at least one hour. Now, very quickly, the shades um, have pretty much moderate attributes, moderate skills. Uh, they got yeah, leather they, armor and a lot a, of d6s with a d8 here and there. You know, yeah. toughness, the construct average. ability, the construct and the fearless ability. Um, okay, so overall, man, I really want to like Pathfinders. They they really are, even more so than maybe even the, the Duelist, pretty niche. And when I say weak, you know, I'm not always talking about combat. Like, that's not my, you know, I like, if anything, I love when there's out-of-combat things, like the Arcane Trickster, right? right? Range Ledgerman, that gives me so much more than a combat ability. Uh... And I love exploration stuff. That's my favorite, one of my favorite parts of games to do. But, you know, the pathfinding ability, the call down the, I mean, that, that one is so circumstantial. And you really, this is one of the ones that when I talked about in my power document, you have to talk to your GM about this. I mean, you can pretty much get no value out of that. If they're, if they're not using, you know, the, the whole 10% of speed. I mean, who wants to do that math, first of all? That's well, insane. Um, it, you know, this is, this would be Gary, the, the, <laughs> You know, the spirit uh -huh. of Gary Gygax would be all over this. It's like, yeah, he would be you, all you over have this. to make sure you understand how long it's going to take between yeah. point A and point B in miles per hour. So that 10% makes a big deal. 
versus how I normally do it. It's like, how long is that going to take us? I don't know, a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, a couple of days. Yeah. And this is coming from me. Like, I'm a person, I've done a lot of backpacking. I've done survival training. I've done, uh, you know, first aid survival and stuff. So I've been, I, you know, you see me in games. I get really into what actually, the, the, art, the terrain and how long it would take. But even me, this is way too much. And the whole, you know, the, the second ability of the Pathfinder one is better that you can re-roll, um, that you're able to re-roll a card, but the GM might not even use that mechanic. So, you know, if that's not being used, and that's like, that was one of the worst edges in the game, personally. Um, yeah. the, I'm just going to skip two, but the three, the call down of legends, you know, the shades aren't that great, but you do get five of them, which is cool. Um, they last for an hour, but it's once per week for game week. You know, I, I almost would have liked to see maybe a, a little bit cooler summoning thing, and maybe not, you know, one more powerful ones with or different abilities that you could choose from, and maybe less. Overall, it's kind of it's a lot of extras on the board all of a sudden, but they're not really that interesting. Um, right. And the it, Chronicler and two. Uh, that one is yeah. Do it. I kind of like sorry, it. Want to talk about three? Yeah. Well, Chronicle I like two is cool. That that one I like because. But why can't that be the first one and yes. not require Pathfinder Chronicler? Because then that one I could see taking, but I wouldn't take yeah. necessarily the other ones. Because like three, I feel like that would really only make sense in some kind of climactic situation within a couple of sessions, right? Because it's one per game week. And so yeah, maybe the, you know, you're you're finally hitting the main foe. Yeah, I can pull them in and I got some extra horsepower for that. But I, and I'll be honest, as a game master... Eh, there's going to be some extra guys anyway. I don't know if it helps you. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you're going to probably plow through them. And, and since these extras aren't, you know, super um, super strong, there's no. going to be a lot of whiffs anyway, right? So, Yeah, well, two, I mean, if you look at two, two is basically the luck edge for the whole party. Uh, <laughs> well, well, it's it's an interlude, but instead of you just getting a Benny, everybody gets a Benny basically kind of thing, you know, in a sense, right? Yeah, that, that is true. Although the, you don't get a Benny though. That's what's funny. Like you're not getting a Benny. Although I might let the, I mean, it depends. I mean, the, the Bard gets a much better ability at Seasons. Um, like theirs is just way better. Um, but, you know, this is, that's still, I mean, I'm sorry, not way better, but I think better. That, that's still, that's actually a good edge though, the Pathfinder Chronicle 2. But I mean, very hard pressed to take that first one and just get nothing out of it. I think much. I would swap them around and say, you could just take yeah. Chronicler 2 and call that Chronicler and, oh, you're not going to take three anyway? Okay, well then there's just one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah, so overall, I think Pathfinder is probably, again, weak. When I say weak, I don't just mean combat, I just mean overall. You know, doesn't doesn't hit the mark for me at all. I think they really missed it. This one, compared, especially compared to the other ones, which are yep, a lot cooler. So uh, now, okay, cool. Shadow Dancer. Shadow Dancer. Um, that's performance D six plus, uh, stealth D eight plus, and thievery D six plus. So there's a lot you gotta have going for you there. Um, yeah. Some characters to prefer the shadows. The shadows uh, embracing the advantages of darkness to become artists of deception and surprise. And so what they get at the initial stage is greater dark vision. Strong connection to the plane of shadows allows the hero to see perfectly even in pitch darkness up to 20 inches, uh, 40 yards, and ignore all illumination penalties resulting from it. This includes seeing through effects or effects that typically stop dark vision. Okay. Shadow Dancer 2, that adds in uh, shadow cloak, darkness, uh, dark, I'm uh, sorry, Darkness envelopes, uh, envelops, sorry, and protects the champion. He or they will get one free soak attempt at minus two whenever they, uh, they're they wounded in dim or dark illumination. And this does not count as spending a bunny. And then three adds in mystic powers, shadow force. Um, shadow in force. In parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> as a limited free action, the shadow dancer can cast one of the following spells. Blast, Illusion, Summon Ally, Teleport, Self Only. And all of these have the Shadow Trapping. Um, and they have 10 dedicated power points that recharge normally. Um, they automatically activate the power with success for its regular cost and a raise for an additional two power points. Uh, and then it says C Chapter 5 on spells, blah, blah, blah. Um, blast still requires line of sight, but otherwise automatically hits as long as any part of the target is visible and in range. And then Mystic Powers doesn't grant access to edges requiring an arcane background. 
The Shadow Dancer also has an arcane background. None of the edges and abilities can be used with the Mystic Power. So it's kind of its own thing, basically. Yeah, it's like the other Mystic Powers yeah. um, in the game. Yeah. Um, eh, Dark Vision. Okay, Greater Dark Vision. And then this just... I guess it applies if you get a lot of darkness going on <laughs> in your game, right? And um, I don't know. I, I I don't get excited about it personally. Um, but oh, then okay. you know that's just me. Uh, but then as a game master, I don't know. I mean, maybe I just don't run it right. But I never run into a lot of situations where there's just so much trouble with light. Um, you know, yeah. we, we don't typically. You know, I guess that you'd have to, you'd, that'd have to be a thing, right? Maybe you're, you know, you're using some other, you know, talking about a different system, Underdark, then, I mean, I guess that would be where these sort of things would be very useful because you don't always, you, you know, you can be lost in the dark for a long time. But I don't know, I don't run into it a lot. As a game master, that's not something I focus on much. But um, so what do you think? I, I think you think it's a little more powerful, right? Uh, no, I mean... <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's cool. I mean, it it is the like this is what Shadow Dancers are. I think they did a really, they did a good job of representing Shadow Dancers from Pathfinder. Um, even the requirements, everything kind of gives you that. Um, I do like it, and again, but you are right. It is one of the ones that is very game and or GM dependent. Um, if your GM does not use you know all the dim dim stuff or dark, you know, then you might not get stuff out of it. I'm starting to but feel like I'm lazy this, or something. I'm starting to feel like I'm lazy. I keep saying, well, I don't worry about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think illumination is one of those things that often gets lost in, in the wayside in a lot of games. I don't think I think that's rather typical, um, it, especially if you're not using you know if you're if you're not on like using dynamic lighting and stuff on maps, then obviously that's. It's very hard usually to remember that as a GM. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling of attacked right now. I feel a little attacked. No, no, no. I'm, not a I'm, I'm saying that it's very common. Uh, but I think if you're taking this, then, you know, often you'd be like, well, am I in dim light? And the GM would be like, oh, yeah, you are. You know, I think, and you can put yourself in situations. So I do think, I, I actually really like this. And this is a, Shadow the Intro 3 is a unique way to get, it's, it's the only thing that besides class edges, and that's, you know, down the class edges, that give you access to Mystic Powers. Um, and if we're looking at them, blast, illusion, summon, ally, or teleport, self only. I mean, those are all really good powers. Yeah, those are good powers. I, I think in the other mystic powers, there was each one had one really big standout. Like Rangers had entangle, Paladin had heal, um, and then there were some other ones. They, they all had their like really big standouts, and the other ones, the other powers weren't as good comparatively. Um, in this case. None of these are like a huge standout to me, but they're all really good powers. I mean, Summon Ally is probably the weakest one, but you could do, you know, if you have the power points, you can copy yourself with a simil similaricum. I can never pronounce that either. Um, teleport's very useful. Blast, Illusion. So yeah, I think they all have a lot of good utility. So I think the Mystic Powers is really good. Um, Shadow Cloak, I think, you know, getting a free Soak attempt at minus two is good. Um, now you could still spend the Benny if you wanted to to not have that minus two. But remember, now, it's, it's got to be in, it's got to be in dim or dark illumination. Yes, dim or dark illumination. But you know, dim isn't that crazy to be in. I mean, it can certainly happen. And if you are placing yourself in situations where you're in dim and dark light, that's, that's how you'd be playing, right? Greater dark vision. You know, this often lends itself to you casting darkness as well. Sure. So if you're casting yeah. darkness, you see through greater dark vision. You have all the benefits to hit Pete them, and they have none. Of, they can't see you. So there's that kind that's of thing. Point. That, that's the yep. that's the classic D and D combo. That's you know it's very bad on the party. So um, now I, I want to point out something we missed with Pathfinder Chronicle Aaron here, and I think we weren't wrong about the um, I forget was the Eldritch art. No, it was the um, Arcane one. Uh, that Pathfinder, the first two are seasoned, and then the last one is Veteran, and Shadow Dancer, the first two are seasoned. So when you said, oh, two would be, could be seasoned, it is seasoned, but you would just make it the initial edge, right? Where they, they would right, because you're talking yeah. Chronicler 2 kind of thing? Yeah. Well, Chronicler it's 2, also it season. says season and requires Pathfinder Chronicler. Yeah, of course. That's what that, I would that's do. How all I the would get rid of that. I'd yeah. make that the Chronicler 1 would yeah. be that. 
with the Epic Tales. I, yeah, I don't know if we were clear about that, but each one of these always requires the first one. But yes. yeah, so Shadow Dancer having that season Shadow Cloak available right away, and then Shadow Dancer 3 being available at Veteran, I think makes it worth it. So I actually really do like this. But like you said, there is a very specific thing based on how your GM is, or if, it, if the game world that you're in. You know, well, but if it you're sounds in the like... Underdark, then it's very powerful. Well, you know, and right. I'm rolling back that, you know, it's not all in a GM because the player um, who's got this capability, you're saying that you'd set yeah. up the situation. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I don't know, get the person in a dark alley or whatever, you know, and, yeah. and or cast darkness. So I, I'm turning around, you know, it, it would give the player a lot of opportunities to kind of, you know, have the spotlight uh -huh, um, on them because they're setting up that situation. Um, I just don't set up the situation that often, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Awesome. But overall, I think it's a cool and thematic and yeah, useful. Yeah. Uh, cool. So now we're moving on. We're actually going away from the core book. And now we're going into the Pathfinder, what's called the Companion, Savage, uh, Savage Pathfinder Companion book, which is mostly, is basically a setting book for Galarian. Uh, Galarian, Galarian. Um, it Galarian. basically talks about Galarian. Talks about all the, it mainly talks about inner sea region. That's the main, um, Carl, that's the main area that they talked about, which is kind of like almost a... It's basically the Mediterranean, an analog, um, when you have kind of like Europe and you have like Indian stuff and then you have like, you know, North Africa and the Middle East kind of all going there around this big, you know, with, with uh, a, a Basilom in the center, which is this big metropolis uh, melting pot, like a New York, basically. Okay. So that's the, that's their main For, for those who don't know, I don't know anything about the Pathfinder yeah. lore. So, uh, <laughs> so that, that's what this book is. So the procedure edges in this book, which is only two of them, um, two two trees. What These are both. Are what uh, page is that on? Uh, they start on page uh, eighty four, and I think it's. I'll, I'll start talking about the first one. Um, <clears throat> we're starting out with Harrower. Um, cool. Uh, so starting out with Harrower, and now the Harrower Harrower is a um, a Varician. Uh, now Varisians have a pretty interesting. They're they're kind of like the, I'm not totally up to all my lore, but they, they were they had a country that got destroyed, and a lot of places they're kind of like basically gypsy Romani or gypsies. That they kind of have that feel to them. Um, they're kind of a diaspora, uh, you know, um, th that kind of feel. Um, so starting out with Harrower, um, this is the fortune telling kind of theme. Uh, you have to have a cult of a D6, performance of a D6, and arcane background or mystic powers, any. Um, and they use fortune telling to apply insight to battle. Now it starts out, uh, once per encounter as a free action, a harrower gains a benefit based on her action card suit. The benefit is listed below and has a duration of five rounds. If they have a spade, they choose an enemy in line of sight, um, and, that, and they gain a plus two bonus to attacks against that target. Um, if they have a heart's, they gain plus two on support rolls. Um, for diamonds, they get a plus two parry. And for clubs, they get a free reroll on soak rolls. Um, Harrower two edge, uh, which is veteran and needs Harrower. Um, they can summon a shimmering translucent Harrow deck, and that's kind of their version of the Tarot deck, made with force that she can manipulate and attack with. Excuse me. As an action, the Harrower can make a ranged attack using Athletics Throwing to fling a Force card, which is a range of 4, 8, 16, damage 2d6, AP1. Once per encounter, as a limited free action, they can modify that Force card attack based on her action card suite. Uh, suit. The benefit is listed below and has a duration of 5 rounds, similar to the first ability. Spades, if the attack hits, they place a small blast template over the target, um, and then it's 2d6 damage and a small blast template. Hearts, they ignore 2 points a penalty on the first attack with the force card diamonds the force card now has ap4 and clubs the force card's damage roll can be rolled once re-rolled once for free i'm really liking um, these clubs okay keep going yeah uh, <laughs> uh okay and then harrower three the most powerful harrowers are able to manipulate the cosmos and adjust the outcome events in their favor before cards are dealt in the first round of an encounter the harrower may look at the top five cards of the deck and discard any number of those cards before putting the rest back in any order the harrower decides in what order action cards should be dealt for this round okay overall i i really like this prestige uh tree i think it's super thematic Cool. Even if you're not playing with Galarian, you know, this is that, that fortune teller tarot person. Um, so I love, I, and I just love this type of character. Obviously, I'm kind of playing a similar-ish character in your game right now. Um, 
uh, yeah, and I think the as far as mechanics wise, the first one I think is really cool. I think anything that gives you it's once per encounter, but it lasts five rounds. It's a free action, so you don't have to do anything. You can decide when you do it in the encounter, and that there's four options, you know, that all have different things going for them. So you can kind of decide what you need most, but you still have to kind of wait on the cards that you get. Something like level headed and prove level headed can help you here, get you the cards that you want. You know, choosing it. I think it's just it's one of the very few things that just perfectly marrows, uh, marries theme and mechanics. So I think this first one, not only thematically, is through the roof, I think it has really cool uh, mechanically. I think it gives you a lot of cool options. Yeah, it just, um, yeah. Hair, yeah, so you want to talk about this first no, one? No, no, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm totally agreeing. Every, oh, okay. you know, it, it's, it's, worth, it's worth it for every one of the um, card suits. You know, it's, yes, they're all good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all have their little bonus. I think the spades one, the plus two on attacks against the target... Yeah, I mean it's really good against the boss, right? I mean that's 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 a target, a, a tax rolls, so really good against that. Um, Harrower two, I think this one is the weakest out of them. I mean you're gaining like a you know you're gaining like a gambit you know card throwing ability. Uh, it's generally pretty weak, so you'd have to have good athletics. And this is coming on a veteran, so it's kind of like, well, what are you doing going up to veteran, and, and like what do you what have you been doing in combat since then? You know what I mean? Right. And the kind of the so. You know, getting this little kind of attack using athletics, where well, you have to have spell casting anyways to get into this, is a little weird. And yeah. the ones for encounter ones on one little attack are pretty weak, in my opinion. So this one is, and this one is like almost a throwaway. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's better. better. Yeah. Um, heroic, I love this one. I, I absolutely love this one. That you can, you know, there's very few things. I mean, Savage Worlds has a lot of meta mechanics, but this is really doubling down on, you know, you're messing with fate. You're messing with the initiative right. one yeah. Uh, yeah. with the GM and then deciding how it all goes out, you know. And I think this is, again, this is perfectly marrying theme and mechanics. So, and, and this, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, and this is a, the, most of the stuff we do when we talk about, it's not all that far off of kind of the basic mechanics, right? We're talking it as yeah. a plus, it does this, it has, this is like basically a fundamental shift in how one of the mechanics work, right? You literally can stack yeah. the deck to make sure it <laughs> comes <your> out <laughs> the way you want it to, which is, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, I don't know. It's heroic. So it feels like kind of a heroic thing. Now I'm heroic and yeah, this is what's going to, this is how it's going to work out, folks. So <laughs> Yeah. It, it's strong. It does come. Now it is, you know, it's only the first round of initiative uh, of an encounter. Which, you know, obviously that makes it not as powerful. It'd be, it'd be crazy doing it every round. But, you know, the first round, a lot of things can happen. So, I, well, I think it's cool. I think it's, you know, it would be too powerful if it was every round. But it's much weaker because it's only one round. Because, you know, the in Savage Worlds, the initiative changes every round. So, you're not getting kind of that set thing that you would maybe in D&D, &D, right? But... You know, winning initiative in most tabletop games is very powerful. You can get a lot done. In well, that but time. we know, so, you know, in the Fast Furious Fun World of Savage Worlds, yeah. that first round of combat really sets the tone. I mean, if you can, That's true. You can cut yeah. down a bunch of mooks right away, or you can get a couple of good shots at the big bad. Consider, assuming that the big bad is exposed, which is bad in kind of design anyway, but um, you can. You set the you set the tone and yeah. like you can get buffs out in time if you know if if it's set up right you set it up right well now the people who want to do the buffs and I think that's cool I mean because the first the first round does make a lot of difference oh, yeah. in how things go yeah yeah so overall yeah I really like this one the, the hair work two is a is a pretty big miss for me honestly I I, I find it very hard to ever see somebody yeah. who's like all of a sudden starts throwing cards when they, when they've had you know novice well so uh, novice I mean, seasoned and vet and you know novice and seasoned yeah I mean, basically what stuff, it's doing so. is you're taking an edge to get a throwing weapon that has some you know magic capability tied to it and it only does 26 once per damage yeah, yeah once per encounter so i mean that's I don't know. I, I agree. That's kind it's of it's okay. I mean, you could start investing in athletics, I guess, but the range is pretty low. I don't know, it, but but yeah, but one and two, one and three are so cool. And you know, I see somebody taking you know, level headed and, and just getting all those other edges too. And yeah, um, and then this can be very powerful when you mix it. You know, that three with with the ones that the edges that we always harp on that you know that trigger off of a Joker or trigger off of something um, that can be helpful for that too. So um, cool. Let's move on to Hell Knight. Uh, do you want me to talk a little bit about the what it is before you read through it, or 
I can talk um, yeah, about you can what say the what Dark action Hell is. Knight, Hell Knight is. Cool. The Hell Knight is one of the most interesting interesting parts of Pathfinder I found. They're a it's a chaotic, uh, sorry, it's a lawful evil country in Galarian where they kind of venerate devils huh. in, in so much as they venerate absolute order and hell to them is the most ordered place. Um, but but they're not like, you know, they don't they, they don't think of themselves as, I mean, they worship Asmodeus, who's the kind of king of hell, but they don't. They don't. They don't like serve devils. Actually, to become a hell knight, you have to defeat a devil in single combat. Um, so they're always about like utmost efficiency, the up, like utmost law. They're all about you know they wear this like heavy, scary armor, and they're one of those ones that like they could be your ally even though you just hate their met. They're all about like the the ends justify the means. So they're like and lawful neutral. No, they, they are very purely uh, <laughs> lawful evil. I mean, they well, are, you just said they, though the big that, thing with you them just is, said that they. They're, they well anyway I, I don't know the way you explained them they didn't sound they sound they could do good they have things slaves. if it makes sense hold on right? they have slaves uh, we'll just start with that they, they have slaves they've enslaved okay, countries okay so I thought they were lawful evil and then you kind of gave that you know make, no no no, no. I mean yeah I would go lawful evil okay they, but by they, the way no, they, they want we don't yeah. have we, you know they don't have that right they just have evil good and neutral right in Pathfinder so <laughs> no what <laughs> no they have lawful evil no and and, and this Pathfinder Savage Worlds Pathfinder, they don't have those nine alignments. Really? I don't think so, but okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's what they're going on. So, uh, yeah, take it away. All right, Hell Knight. It was a hell of a night. Um, so, in, <laughs> and, and they need Intimidation. All right, there you go. Intimidation D8. Makes sense. Notice D6. Occult D8. And they got to slay a devil. So, I mean, it's a requirement. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Must what? slay a devil. <laughs> That's the I mean, I brought it up. I guess that's there. Uh, <laughs> shit. Wow, that's a big requirement. Um, and this is seasoned. So, you know, to take it as seasoned, you better yeah. be working hard during your uh, your initial rank. So. I mean, an imp, I'm pretty sure, is an imp a demon or a devil? There's either an imp or that other one that's is similar to an imp. Would that count? I'd be like, uh, I slaughtered an imp. I, I, don't, I don't know. Does it say in the uh, okay. vestiary whether... You know, these things are considered devil I, classes or something? I don't I don't know. Well there's 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 some pretty there's some weaker devils. A anyways, <laughs> uh carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so so <clears throat> so you kill your devil, you're all happy. Um and then upon joining the Hell Knights, the initiate is the initiate is granted a special suit of armor. Nice. Known as the Hell Knight Armor. Well, that seems kind of a boring name. You should give it a cool name. It's just Hell Knight Armor. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, the recruit has use of the armor for as long as he's part of the order. The infernal suit protects the Hell Knight so he can focus on dispensing swift justice. Wearing while wearing Hell Knight Armor, the character gains the following benefits. Fearsome, plus two on intimidation rolls. And remember, you start you have to have a D8 intimidation to start with. So um, and then Infernal Sight. Uh, character ignores all illumination penalties and then vigilance minus four damage from acid, cold, and fire. Weird name for something that gives you minus four damage from acid, cold, and fire. Yeah, vigilance. that is weird. Um, okay. Uh, Hell Knight 2. <laughs> um, fortunately, this does not require you to kill you know, a bigger devil. So you just need no. Hell Knight for this one. Um, a Hell Knight knows he must use every tool at his disposal when dealing with the corrupt. Um, not only do they employ the tactics of fearsome creatures of hell, some recruit hellish monsters to accompany them, lending even more terrifying aspects to their intimidating appearance. Okay, so Hell Knight gains the aid of a faithful hellhound, that's sweet, um, that is very resilient to aid him in his quest for justice. If the companion is slain, the Hell Knight may summon another hellhound for free on his next advance. Okay? Hellhounds are cool. Um, Hell Knight 3. Oh, yeah. Once a Hell Knight is in pursuit of a criminal, justice is inevitable. Um, so these are kind of lawful evil coppers. And they're, you know, they're going <laughs> to take you out. So Hell Knights augment their weapons and armor with terrifying powers. As a limited action, the Hell Knight can grant any weapon he wields the elemental fire, um, vicious, or brutal enchantment. So elemental, vicious, or brutal enchantment. This does not. This doesn't stack with enchantment enchantments of the same name already on the weapon. Uh, the Hell Knight can maintain any 
one of these enchantments for the desired length of time as long as he is within 100 feet of the weapon. Boy, there's a lot of requirements there. The Hell Knight can change the granted enchantment as a limited action. So they also then gain, while wearing their armor, immunity fire. Um, now not just minus four damage from fire, immunity fire. Okay, interesting. Did I lose you? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm looking up what those things okay. are. Okay, <laughs> you look deep in thought. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. this is. I mean, it's it's this is pretty cool. I mean, it's it's hard to get there, I imagine. Um, but I I would want to be this just so I could have hell my puppy, you know, or hellhound puppy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it's I'll kill a, a demon. I'll kill a devil just so I can have a hellhound puppy. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's obviously extremely. Th it's again, it's a really really thematic one. Um, it really fits the Hell Knights. Uh, it's mechanically pretty powerful. You're right. The Vigilance is a really weird name for that, but I like the plus two. Now the plus two to intimidation rolls. You can combine that with menacing. I'm assuming you have a plus four to intimidation rolls, and then you know really mess with people. Um, yeah, I love the puppy and that it's very resilient, which means, just to remind people, that means they can take, uh, as an extra, they can take two wounds mm -hmm. before they die, um, which is very good if you have that. And that, um, the, so, okay, so they can wield the elemental fire. And then I've looked up, so vish, so brutal is that weapon is considered a heavy weapon. Um, and vicious is if the wielder hits with a raise, his damage increases by plus four um, in addition to any bonus damage. But he must make a vigor roll or be shaken. Oh, okay. So you just so you just swing so hard that you're gonna rip him, but you you're also uh, could get kind of uh, winded, so to speak, whatever. So okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's an extra plus four damage on top of that d6 that you get, but it can win you. So pretty cool. Yeah, I, helmet's a tricky one. I think it's always pretty tricky. I mean, you know, it's gonna be very specific to a certain type of game that you're playing that already has it set up. I can see this if if you're starting at seasoned. Like we've talked about often, like here's a here's a and their argument to start at season. That referring to our old video, um, you know that could have a character could be starting as a hell knight maybe that's joining the party. Um, I, you don't oh, see only, hell knights often but, in game, but yeah. only if uh, only if you allow the game master to have a pre beginning of the campaign <laughs> session where you have to actually kill the devil. You don't just get to this go season and not already kill the devil. Yes. That's not part I of your mean, backstory. Yeah. Come on. You got to you got to play that one out. <laughs> well, that's well, that's what I'm saying. Like I I think this would be very hard to do I I think in a normal game, I think you'd have to start at season to even have this happen and then work it out with the GM that you've slayed the devil. Otherwise, this is like everybody's a hell knight or working for the hell knights. And then they, they, the game, you know, it's part of a campaign and starts out at novice. And then you have that working up to slaying the devil before you get to seasoned, right? It'd be like the last thing you do before the, the fourth advance, I guess. Because otherwise this is, you know, very hard to do. And, and joining the Hell Knight is already a whole thing. So I think this is either right. in the case of the game itself is a Hell Knight based game. Or you guys are starting at seasoned already. And you're like coming in being like, I'm a Hell Knight who's working, you know, I'm the Order of the, I forget what the orders are, but there's like Order of the Claw, I think, or something. There's a bunch of different orders. And one of them is like the ones that go out. Or you're like, you're looking for a criminal and that's how you join up with the group, you know, and that could be an interesting dynamic. Um, but that's the only kind of ways I see this ever happening. You know what I mean? I can't see somebody normally being like, I want to join the Hell Knights. And then like the whole party traveling there and waiting around for a year while they tr they train and join this faction. And you're sitting in this, you know, evil nation basically i think that'd be pretty hard so do you really um, want to do this well my grandfather was a hell knight my father was a hell knight <laughs> he's was a hell knight <laughs> my son's a hell knight uh yeah and you go to hell if you won't let me be a hell knight <laughs> <laughs> so yeah pretty metal right carl it's pretty yeah, metal. Yeah. pretty metal for it's pretty crazy yeah sure <laughs> yeah all right and then you got red mantis this is our final prestige uh, tree, and Red Mantis is obviously another faction-based one. Um, I, I barely vaguely remember what this is based on, but there's a kind of this um, group of assassins that worship this insect god. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. Um, so these are bit pretty. These are pretty much like holy assassins, basically, um, and they're and they're like a uh, uh, signature weapon is called the Sawtooth Saber, which saw Sawtooth Saber, which is a wicked. 
Um, usually th there's two of them at once and they have these kind of like, you know, barbs in them almost or notches, I think that. Yeah. And, and if you get the book, give it its name. Yeah. If you got the companion book that we're reading. Oh, they there's actually them a them picture there. Yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So once they go in, they're, you know, going out kind of does a lot of damage. Um, so cool. So they need uh, intimidation of a D6, notice of a D6, stealth of a D8, trademark weapon, soft two saber, and two weapon fighting. So uh, probably kind of the most requirements we've seen. Um, the assassins of the Red Mantis kill with the prayer attack, which is, I think, some type of praying move. Uh, they hold mount, oh, point down and weave the blades in the air. Okay. So that's, it's saying it right there. So you have to hold them out. Um, you have to be within five inches and visible of a target. That's interesting. So to do this attack, you have to be within five inches. Uh, once per encounter as a limited action, the assassin tests her target with fighting. Okay, opposed by spirit. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, if successful, her target is stunned or paralyzed with the rays, and he is enthralled by the red mantis assassin's movements. Notice that note that the stunned creatures are not considered helpless, and so cannot be dispatched with a finishing move. But paralyzed are by the way, BT dubs. Um, Red Mantis 2, as a gift from their god, the assassins are able to generate a mysterious red shroud around their bodies. Um, this allows them to survive longer uh, while ensuring that if they're slain, they cannot be identified to, to you know, so they can't be betray their organization. What this gives them, it gives them the ability to shroud themselves in a veil of red mist once per encounter as a limited free action. Uh, this remains in high winds and has a duration of five rounds. While they're protected, they may make a free soak roll whenever she's wounded. That was a long walk to that. Uh, basically, yeah, it's a limited free action, and it lasts for five rounds, and you can make a free soak roll. Um, if you're, she's slain while this is active, uh, basically they can decide whether to remain corporeal or disintegrate into a cloud of red mist, leaving nothing behind, basically. Um, and then Red Mantis 3, whereas uh, it's called uh, Not Even the Walls of a Fortress Can Stop Them. And basically, this is similar to Dragon's, uh, the Shadow um, one. Uh, this gives them mystic powers. Um, as a limited free action, the Red Mantis can invoke one of the following powers, Disguise, Intangibility, Mind Wipe, and Teleport. All except Mind Wipe are self only, but the Red Mantis gains no benefits from that limitation. Uh, they get 10 power points, uh, yada, yada, yada. It's the yeah, same, it's exactly, exactly the same like stuff. It. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly the same stuff. Um, Cool. So let's talk about this. So the first one, um, again, this is, you know, if you're Red Mantis, this is, you're definitely kind of like an evil cleric assassin. So, you know, you could also, again, if you're starting at seasoned, I could see you saying that you were in this and you left. If you know, you still, you still know the training, you have like a scroll, you could always work that out. You could still be in it. You know, I, I haven't really read much about the Red Mantis or played much with them. So I'm not too familiar with how a player would go about it. Well, okay. Um, sure. But the first ability you know, it, it's a once per encounter, it, but it's very powerful, right? I mean, it, it's a test that uses fighting and it's opposed by spirit. I mean, I guess smarts probably would be better because generally spirit's higher on most characters than smarts is unless they're a smart based character. But that it's a test and that it does stunned or paralyzed. I mean, paralyzed is crazy, right? Um, so very powerful, even though it's once per encounter. Um, Red Mantis right. 2, uh, also pretty good, I think. I mean, it's a free action, and it enables you to make that free soak roll. I mean, a free soak roll, you know, that could be huge, right? And that's yeah. five rounds of that. So that's huge. And the Red Mantis 3, uh, let's look at this. So the, um, the the powers that it gives you are Disguise, Intangibility, Mind Wipe, and Teleport. Now, these are all obviously very thematic to what this is as, as an assassin. Um Disguise, that's a great one to have. Tangibility is pretty expensive, but cool. Uh, mind wipe, that one's a very difficult one and very expensive to actually pull off fully. Um, you have to use mods for that. You can check out my power document. I talk a lot about mind wipe. <laughs> and then teleport obviously can be useful, but yeah. So overall, I think I think the Mr. Powers isn't the best one, but really good for an assassin character. And I think overall, this is a better assassin than the assassin archetype. Uh, what do you think? Um, huh, interesting. Better assassin than, I mean, there's no save or die. Come on. <laughs> but there's save or paralyze. <laughs> which could which, turn into a die. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So, pretty easily, I mean, yeah. I mean, this definitely from a, 
interest standpoint, there's more here than the assassin for sure. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting that um, these in the companion, you know, the, both uh, the Red Mantis and the Hell Knights, a lot of their uh, capabilities are very thematic, but have us utility to them. It, yeah, and even more so than in the, the core Pathfinder book, you know, it, it, it feel very much like we've got these very, you know, I don't know, very, um, I mean, they're factions. They're, they're, yeah. I mean, they're theme, the, the heavy theme. Yeah. It's, they're not just, Hey, I'm a, this kind of class doing this thing. It's like, well, no, you're a red mantis. This have a very, very yeah. specific meaning in this world, you know, very specific. Yeah. So very cool. Very cool. A lot of requirements though. I mean, that is, uh, you know, assassin, at least you just have to have sneak attack this. You have to have, a million things going on so yeah very cool <laughs> very cool all right well i, I think it, it's uh well the, the picture alone which probably will be in the video um i hope yeah but the picture alone <laughs> yeah you get to be a badass that's for sure <laughs> so <laughs> definitely um, i like even she even has little like mini which i don't even know what those are but they're like mini uh sawtooth i guess those are sawtooth daggers i don't know i've never seen those before they, they almost look like um the Somebody took a harpoon and cut the shaft off them, kind of thing. Almost. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, all right, uh, that's everything, right? We've got it all covered. All the prestige. That's edges. all the prestige edges. Yeah. So, um, you know, overall, uh, I think prestige edges add a lot to the game. I think they're a really cool way to diversify beyond the class edges, um, and they and some of them do some really unique stuff. So, yeah. Overall, I think I think you know. Overall, I like. I really do like the whole. I think people. Some people are on the fence whether they like class and prestige stuff for for savage worlds but you know this is pathfinder um right. but i think even for generic i know even for generic fantasy these i think i like these a lot they add a lot of theme and the prestige, prestige just really add more into that they really can shake up because you can combine you know what class you have to what prestige and that can make a definitely more unique character so yeah and even um, for yeah. um i'm doing that dragon lance redo i think yeah the class edges and you know now that we've gone to the prestige edges maybe there's something there to to play into because you know they're, they're very much thematic too you know with knights of salama and 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 you got the cleric of mishakal and they're very specific kind of people so that'd be cool yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that that's awesome um all right well that is our look at prestige edges and we appreciate everybody watching again look at the bubbles do the stuff um you should have went back to one before you looked at this one, but if you didn't, you should go look at one. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm Carl with Eric. And this is Tabletop Tango, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy game. and intrigue. Fighting monsters out of our league. We'll roll the dice and breathe the nice. A plus two and I might succeed. Whether Cthulhu or D&D. Or what's on drive through.